Can you smell that? What's that? You know what I think it is? I think it's time for some more Siberia. And welcome back! Last time we talked to our dear lawyer friend, Matria Alfolta, and he told us what our next objective is. It is, of course, to go grave robbing. And you might be thinking to yourself, but well, I don't think he implied with okay? Right? This isn't an adventure game. And that means that if he talked about ghosts, he talked about like people dying, there was an heir, and he mentioned a graveyard, and he said like this is cemetery over here and the log is very loose on it. I'm sure that's what he said. We're gonna have to go grave robbing. That's just that's the rule. He said ghosts, we're gonna scooby do it. So let's go. It's kinda anticlimactic just clicking and having her walk. <clears throat> Can I steal this now? I can. Mm. Ah, okay, I know what that is now. I felt that I was a little bit mumbly and a little bit slow last time, so that's why I'm pepping up a bit. I want to see if we can keep a better pace uh, going through this game. I mean, it's a nice relaxing game, uh, a good point and click is. But I don't want to get like completely stuck either. Let's see if we can find a, a good medium in between. Hello? Kate? Dan, I'm so pleased to hear your voice. How are you, honey? Did you have a good journey? Have you settled in? I was long, tiring, damp especially, but I'm okay. Especially when you... Everything going as planned? Yeah, I mean, well, not really. It's not exactly what I thought it would be. You know, everything's so different here. Actually, while we're on the subject, I managed to free myself up tomorrow lunchtime. I'll come and meet you at the airport. I hope the flight from Paris won't be delayed. We're expected at the Goldbergs about 8 o'clock. I hope you have the time to take a shower and change, my poor honey bun. Dan, I don't think the Goldbergs tomorrow night is really on. Don't worry, Kate. You'll be as perfect as ever. Anyway, you never have to wear much to look really great. Dan, Dan, I I'm going to have to extend my stay here. There's one or two complications. You understand? Honey, what are you talking about? It's only a measly toy factory. The sale isn't going through as expected. I I've got to stay a bit longer. Dan, you don't mind, do you? But Kate, Katie, you can't do this to me. I mean, it's the Goldberg contract. There's millions of dollars on the line here. I know, I'm sorry. You go ahead. Don't worry about me. I'll get back as soon as I can, I promise. Okay, I I've got to go. I'll call you back soon. Love you, honey. Can, um, can women be cocked? I mean, <laughs> probably shouldn't go down that road. But yeah, there's another character. Um, there's another like show, show uh, Kate showing her character that, that she, she is a little bit timid and people are expecting. Uh, and you, uh, this will come up later, of course, people are expecting a lot from her like it, her boyfriend is like drop everything you have fly back from France you know there can't be any complications there because I made reservations even though we're in another country come meet me and she's like she's worming her way out of it she she doesn't stamp her foot and say and, and go I'm in fucking France bro I can't just fucking jump on a plane, you know, I have grapes to rob. I, I can't just be there, there was complications, you know. You can't plan around that, especially when you're that far away from home. But she doesn't do that, she's like, she she doesn't want to hurt Dan, and then she like, weasels her way out, basically. Alright. So now we're in... So what we picked up was the key for the gate outside. And we're in... Uh, this is like, let's call it like the entrance courtyard area of the factory. And we will just examine the area in, in order, of course. As you can see here it says Vorlberg. This is like the... I think this is the main factory. No, it's not the main factory, but it's part of it. Oh, 
Oh, okay, so it is the main factory. Good job rem remembering that ring. Oh, thank you. I think we go up here first would be best. It's like an, another adventure game trope. It's like, oh, well, he told me to roam around the city. I guess I'll steal this key and just go into an abandoned factory. That That's not gonna backfire. What could happen? What are those signs with like hard helmets and all those melding hands? That, that's not for me. The factory is closed. <laughs> Alright, so big fat nothing. It's another thing I did a lot back in the day. I would get stuck somewhere in an adventure game and then you know, the old school guys out there, they, they know exactly what I'm talking about now. Just pixel hunt and I would just outdo this. Basically. I mean, not like, like, the entire screen, but I would just, it, uh It was so bad in those old games. But actually that did help me, because I, I had forgotten what this screen was about and there we go. That's the one. See how tiny that pixel was? Tiny pixel. Ah, uh, what I'm talking about. Tiny that area of. Oh, sorry. Getting ahead of myself here. Hopefully, I can clean that up in post. But what I was gonna say, yeah, you you would just do this to find like the the magic pixel you needed to touch to to progress. Uh, and yeah, you recognize that as uh, the you know, the main theme of the game. Uh, soundtrack even. Ah, oh, this thing's jammed. Oh, this thing is jammed. I heard I heard that a lot when I was playing this through the first time as well. Because then I didn't know what to do, so I have to try things out, and that that appears quite a lot. Ah, oh, this thing is jammed. Some more reading here from Perotin Blanchard Solicitors, Association of Bailiffs, Rue du Chatran, something French. Madame Warburg is addressed to from Bruges Grand Valley Bash July 20th, 2001. It's a reference number. And Object is recovery of outstanding payments. Madam, you will have received several warnings from my office concerning penalty charges incurred on unpaid invoices from the company La Colombe. The total debt for which you are responsible currently stands at 40, 47,782 francs and 46... I guess that's a comma, right? No, that's a dot. That means it's uh, like French cents. I didn't know they had like like cents in like France, huh? I strongly advise you to acquit yourself of this debt by sending the necessary funds to our payment center. In the absence of such a response on your part, I will be obliged to undertake legal proceedings against you to recover the outstanding funds. Yours faithfully, Blanchard Bailiff. If you go on here, there's another one. Despite numerous follow-up letters on our part, we noted that you still owe the sum of 80,210 francs, corresponding to invoices dated January, February and March 1989, including in uh, increments for late payment. We are asking you to res resolve the situation by return of post. In case of non-payment, we will be obliged to suspend all supplies and refer the matter to a relevant legal authorities. To the relevant legal authorities. We trust we shall hear from you soon. Yours faithfully, Monsieur Matrinot, Head of Accountancy. So this is getting dire. And there's a letter from the Passerie Bank. 
Dear Anna, I find myself under the obligation to undertake certain proceedings against your company. A situation I find particularly painful given this special relationship our bank has enjoyed with the company over the years. You yourself admit that for some time, Warabird Manufacturing has become a financial liability and due to shareholder and partnership pressure, I am no longer able to underwrite your debts with the bank. I am sorry to say that we are obliged to comply with the economics imp uh, economic imperative of the era. It is for this reason that I beg you to accept the American investor's proposal. Such a takeover comes at a fortuitous moment, as it is the only way to swell your accounts and settle your debts. It will also enable Borobet manufacturing to stay afloat, streamline production and modernize production techniques. You will thus be able to keep the Vorarlberg name line uh, name alive, one that is uh, in its day uh, was a guarantee of quality and sovereign fair. There's that word again. I forgot to look it up. I, don't, I should do that for the next episode. Please believe me, Anna, when I say that I offer this advice not just as a banker but also as an old friend who uh, desires nothing but good for you. I know that such a decision cannot be taken easily. You can truly hold your head up high, my dear Anna, and be proud of your achievements throughout the years. My deepest apologies for bearing such unpleasant news, and I remain at your entire disposal should you need me. Yours in dear friendship. And then I can read the handwriting. Oh, it's under there. Gustav Passeri. So, at this point, uh, we see... Oh my gosh. Invoices, invoices, more invoices. I never knew the factory was in such a bad way financially. These last two years must have been very hard for Anna Vorlberg. Indeed they must, and that was what I was about to point out. But yeah, she was in dire straits and seemed like she was not ready to sell the factory as the last letter from the bank hints at. And in that letter, I think there's a hint given to why she might not be wanting to give up the factory. And that is the modernization part. She was probably worried that uh, the Americans would come in and then they would like modernize and eventually just drop uh, automaton production altogether and just change it out with something else. And here's a handwritten letter. Belle Dylan, 6 March, March 2002. Dear Hans, I know how much you dislike the written word, but I do not have the time to forge you a voice cylinder. Ooh, sounds advanced. Oh, excuse me, I had to burp. How unprofessional. I imagine that someone in your entourage will be kind enough to read these few lines to you. I received your latest set of plans. Your project is extraordinary. Your all-time masterpiece, perhaps. Time seems to have had no effect on your genius, quite the contrary. I'm proud of you, my dear little brother. Sometimes I find it hard to believe that a century has gone by since the last time I saw you. It only seems like yesterday that you rushed away, rushed away from Valadilen. We undertook production immediately, following your instructions to the letter. The locomotive was ready within a week. If only you could see it, but you will see it, that much I have promised you. It is magnificent. It seems uh, it seems impatient to set out on its maiden voyage. There is only Oscar left to build. I hope I will finish him soon. But as you can imagine, his mechanism is complex and takes a great deal of time and handiwork. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand you wish me to bring you that cursed prehistoric doll. The very thought of which I wonder if it's still in the cave, and if it is, what state is it is in? But what does 60 years matter, after all, uh, to an object already several thousand years old? I'm going to find it, Hans, I promise you. I have a bit of a nasty flu at the moment. Oh, dun dun dun. Which is running me down a little. Yeah, it's running you down, alright. I should be better in a few days, though. The uh, state of the factory is taking shape. The lawyer from New York should be visiting and will be able to sign the con contracts. Then I shall... And then there's no more. Maybe this is where she had her 
like in faction or whatever. So these are probably her very, very last words. Must have been goddamn lonely in this place in, in the last years of, of this factory. Doesn't seem like validity then if there wasn't a factory for people to come work at and stuff like that and, and bringing in tourists and all, and all that. There would just be nobody here. Just none. Just a, as it is now. Just foggy and, and slightly dead. I know we, yeah, we have to go up that l there later, so we'll, we'll save that. We'll just move down here. Yes, hello? Kate! to you, my poor munchkin. I've been trying to contact you for hours. I'm in Europe, Ma. Job thing. What? Europe? My God. Oh, I've got such happy memories of Europe. Some of them even involve your father, but uh, that's enough of that. Tell me, where are you? Paris? London? Venice? Valadilene. Yeah, I know. It's a bit out in the boonies. What in the world are you doing out there? You know, business. I've got to see through the takeover of some old family business that's got a few debts. It's a really charming place, but there's one or two weird things going on here. I, I can't go into it now. Oh, well, that's right. Your old mother's too dumb to understand it. You really do take after your father sometimes. Mother. Kate, you'll never guess who I saw yesterday. Ma, I haven't got a lot of time, you know. Frank! Ma, please, I've got to go. Frank Malkovich, the Russian opera singer. Well, maybe you don't remember him. He was quite a star in his day. Listen, Ma, I really don't have the time. I'll call you back. He is as charming as he always was. We spent the... Mom, I really have to go. I'll call you back, I promise. Lots of love. Kate! Mom! <laughs> so, yeah, at this point, we're probably going to just start dreading every single phone call. Kate is not having the best of luck with those. And she, on that on that account, she, she does remind uh, me a little bit about myself. I, I also feel that when I'm talking, people just kind of talk over me. And I don't know what it is. I'm a very, like, people forget I'm there type of guy. So maybe that's just it. So even, even mom is too busy with herself to, to let Kate get a word in edgewise. So, uh, yeah. And again, like, that is super impressive that all of that is like wound up. Would still, I just would hate to be the guy who had to oversee that. Make sure it does all the things correctly. Because it's not like a production line in the modern era. You hook things up to a computer and it has like error correction and control. To an extent, of course, there still have to be people there and stuff, and great, great loading, loading those models, by the way. <laughs> but with this, it's like, you just, what if you don't wind it up enough, it just stops halfway down production, it's just, ah. So yeah, this is obviously for a puzzle later on. Alrighty, so that ribbit, excuse me, automaton there must be Oscar. There's something, there's something, is something odd to you? I don't, there's something odd about 
about that automaton. I can't, I can't put my finger on it though. All right, so let's see if we can take a look around here. It's this thing. Maybe it will lower it. Maybe we have to finish it. It will. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a psychic. It'll help us rot graves. Oh my god, it moves! It's alive! It's alive! Right, so that's interesting. Oh, many thanks indeed! I am most embarrassed for you to see me like this. I lack a certain completion. You see, nobody here found the time to polish off the finishing touches. Honestly, these days, we really have lost the art of good workmanship. Uh, yeah, maybe. With whom do I have the honor of speaking? <laughs> Could you please state your identity, articulating clearly? My name is Kate. Kate Walker. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Model XZ2000. My common name is Oscar. I represent the technological zenith of this factory's production. I have been designed to drive a locomotive. A touch messy, but an essential task. Alright. <laughs> Alright. So. You lower you lower the fucking thing, right? And it like, it, it takes its arm off the thing by itself. And your first reaction isn't like, Holy fucking shit, that's good programming. You then walk over to it, talk to it. And once it's done saying its first sentence, you sound annoyed like, Yeah. I guess so. No. It's it it's a ro it talks to What's up with you, woman? Can can explain to me. Mm, mm. It's like I w I would have a lot more questions than that, honestly. Uh, but maybe we do. We do have a a lot of talking here, so I guess we'll just take it from the top and see what we can find out about dear Oscar. Maybe he knows where to go next. Fully. Have you logged my first and last name? <laughs> Perfectly. Kate Walker. She's such a to bitch you. to him. Me too. Uh, model XZ2000. Please, all my friends call me Oscar. This fad for cryptic names is such a bore. Could you imagine being called by your passport number? I suppose not, Mr. Oscar. Sir. She's, she's being kind of a bitch. It's like... Have you locked my name? It's like, isn't that what you stupid robots do? It's like, he's, he's still, it's alive. It's talking to you. It's a fucking technological marvel. Do you know where I could find the factory paperwork? I cannot reply to this question with precision. Try Anna Vorlberg's office above the machine floor. All right, so you, um, we got that call as soon as we went under the, like, the... Um, under the office into this area and she said like oh it's a small thing that has a, a factory that has a, a little bit of debt and i don't know if the conversation is different if you read the papers about her having debt before you get the phone call because i i think you get the phone call either way so that might be something that if you're playing through it yourself or reliving it yourself or something you can check that out because because i ain't going back for, for such small detail when you are complete and totally functional, can you help me gather information about Hans Vorlberg? I'm afraid I can't, Kate Walker. Duty calls. Once I've recovered my feet, I have to see to my post on the train. It's waiting for its engineer. Does the name Hans Vorlberg mean something to you? Of course. He created me. But I'm sorry to say that I am yet to meet my maker. Have you any idea where he might be right now? No, Kate Walker, but I am sure I would experience great metaphysical satisfaction in his presence. You said you were a train engineer? What train would that be? But, Kate Walker, you have not seen the magnificent train waiting at the station? And where is that train going, Mr. Oscar? The train is going far away. Very, very far away indeed. Are you taking any passengers? My duty is to drive the train. Above all, to avoid delays. An engineer prides himself on punctuality. 
I will agree with you, though, Kate Walker, that a train without passengers is hardly a train at all. You haven't answered my question. For further details, please consult Anna Vorlberg. <laughs> well, could be a freight train, doesn't need people for that. Like, don't need passengers. Do you know Momo? No, Kate Walker. Well, that was... concise. I like it. You are a very strange robot. Automaton, if you please. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Automatons have an additional soul auxiliary, you understand? Uh, I think so. Yeah, you got that. Solux, yeah, got one of those in my tra tractor. Got, got it. Has it been a long time since you last saw Anna Vorlberg? 72 hours, 32 minutes, and 20 seconds, to be precise. This regrettable absence explains the delay in my production process. Anna Vorlberg is dead, Mr. Oscar. What do you mean by the notion of death, Kate Walker? Broken. Disactivated. Worn out. Damaged. Unplugged. Oh, that really is most bothersome. I'd rather count it on finishing my production. Can I be of use to you? Why, you certainly can. I absolutely must have my feet. My hands are model XZ2003. My feet are model XZ2005 underscore B. Be careful. The model XZ2005 underscore A has evidenced some rather embarrassing performance failures. Like bugs? Automatons do not have bugs, Kate Walker. They simply display functional idiosyncrasies. I'm sorry, I didn't know. What do I have to do to get you a pair of feet? Use the assembly line to construct them. You will need a production punch card, on which is recorded my body design data. Here is my own punch card. Okay, I'll give it a go. Thank you, Kate Walker. Yeah, Thomas and Tone, they don't have box, right? They just spass out, get it right. All right, so... That Oscar, I am delighted to have met you. See you again soon, I hope. Yes, Kate Walker. I think that's a good place to stop it for this episode. I absolutely love Oscar, and of course we're going to see a lot more of him in the coming episodes. And I just cannot wait. He's such a good character. And I, I don't think I could understand how rude she is to Oscar. She meets this marvel of technology and she's like, ah, Robots, I mean, really. It's like, have you locked my name? <laughs> yeah, that's me that's triggered. <laughs> Alright, I will see you next time.